Hey, it's Molly. Welcome back to my channel as we're going to discuss the Scorpio full moon happening on April 23rd, 2024 at 7.47 p.m. That's Eastern time. So be sure and adjust for your location on the planet. So the Scorpio full moon is happening at four degrees of Scorpio, 17 minutes with the moon in Scorpio opposing the sun at four degrees of Taurus, 17 minutes. And this particular full moon actually continues the energies that started with the Aries solar eclipse. So this is still part of eclipse season as that eclipse opened up a brand new cycle. And now we have the first interaction between the sun and the moon in an opposition since that new moon. And so this is the energy of really going into the depths of what you feel. Scorpio is intuitive and it wants to seek truth beyond what is seen, beyond what is visible or what we even identify at first. This is where we have an opportunity to dig into what's under the surface and get to the heart of how we're truly feeling about something. Now, this could, of course, be in contrast to what the sun in Taurus prefers, which is simplicity, something that's clean and easy to use, doesn't want complications or messiness. And so this is the access here of how you're able to still maintain your stability and a sense of strength, even while there could be a lot going on under the surface or deeper within your being. This can also be illuminating fears, fears around loss, fears around betrayal, fears around change. The Scorpio journey is one of being able to remain in your power while undergoing some of these deeper, more intense life experiences that involve not only our internal world, but then how these energies interact with others because Scorpio is the energy of merging. So it's how you feel around other people, what you're picking up in their energy. If you are unconsciously absorbing too much or sensing too much that is not healthy for you, that is not good for you. So this particular Scorpio full moon could be wonderful for what you are emotionally cleansing as well as what you're facing that most likely is uncomfortable. And that's because both the moon and the sun are in a square to Pluto, creating a T-square and Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio, as is Mars, which I'll get to in a moment. But this particular square that is only two degrees apart from Pluto in Aquarius is pushing you into an uncomfortable truth. Something that you could be resisting or fighting against, something that you could be internally battling. This is, of course, new territory for Pluto in Aquarius. And this is the first time we've had a Scorpio full moon with a square to this energy. And so this could be pushing out something that you have outgrown, that you are ready to outgrow. This can certainly be anything in the Aquarius realms of friends, a direction in life, something that you have been fixated on and moving towards, and now your fears are coming up around it. Maybe it's not what you thought it would be. It's looking different. How do I deal with that? What is really going on inside of me? The square from this Pluto requires a deep penetrating look at what your truth is that maybe the mind, the cerebral energy here of Aquarius has been overlooking. Because Aquarius is fixated on the future calling, on the direction, on the bigger dream and vision, there can be a disconnect from what you really feel about it. And this is actually bringing you into some type of truth that you can't avoid. And even if you've been trying to or pushing it away, this is a rising to the surface of something that you're meant to work through. Now it is the beginning of that because of how the moon is at four degrees of Scorpio 
and still has the rest of Scorpio to travel through. And so this is going to be a catalyst here, an activator of moving through something right after the full moon is exact that shows you how you're meant to reclaim something that is in alignment with your emotional truth, with your needs, even if it's something you felt you had to give away or was taken from you. Because sometimes this moon in Scorpio is hypersensitive to deception or to lies or to untruths. And it seeks the truth in a situation, in an experience, in a connection. And this could be something that you're deeply feeling and maybe even something that you are fighting your logical mind about. So Pluto squaring this moon is pushing something to the surface that is uncomfortable. However, it can help fine tune your intuition and your psychic abilities, your psychic knowingness, because part of the gifts of Scorpio is that you feel and sense something before you see it, before there's evidence or proof, and that could be something here that you are experiencing. And then on that same note of evidence and proof, that is what the sun in Taurus seeks. Show me what you're talking about. Give me the proof or documentation or how do I know this is real? Because part of the Taurus energy here wants things to be very straightforward. And it could be something that you feel you're being pulled into with the Scorpio full moon. You're being pulled to take a deeper look. Take a deeper look at something that you're feeling. There is a message for you. There is something that your soul wants you to feel, wants you to come in contact with, but it probably will challenge your mental processing and be uncomfortable. But there's something about that discomfort that is key here, that is key. Now, this full moon happens just days after these two planets are exact. Of course, we're talking about the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Uh, that is the biggest astrological event of the year because it is birthing a new 14-year cycle of creation in these Taurus energies. And so there could be something here that is coming up for you that is quite significant, a really big life change potentially, something taking you out of a comfort zone, breaking down walls, setting you free, and then this would illuminate your fears around change. So with the Scorpio full moon, it's really important to embrace your strength, embrace your ability to handle life and to know that whatever is coming up for you is coming up for a really beautiful divine purpose. Now, as I said, this is occurring here at four degrees of Scorpio, and then the moon is going to travel forward. And as it does so, it gains support from the three planets in Pisces. So the moon will eventually trine Saturn, Mars, and Neptune, which is going to reinforce your intuitive downloads, what you are picking up on that gains strength and clarity. This is where you're going to be able to feel like, yeah, I can really trust this. There's something here that has legs to it. It has something that I'm really meant to tap into and work with it. So even if initially the Scorpio full moon is jolting, there's something here that's going to further develop your intuition. And as the moon trines Saturn, that brings in clarity and stability. Then it trines this Mars in Pisces, a co-ruler of the full moon. And that Mars brings in a yes, a momentum, something that you're just feeling, like it just activates that emotional response of, I want this, this is true for me, this is what I'm going to go for. And then as the moon trines this Neptune, there's a sense of, I'm okay with however this goes. There's a, a bigger detachment here and a bigger sense of also affirming what you were 
initially feeling and sensing. So I do feel like all of this is going to help with the process of trusting whatever is triggered for you during the Scorpio full moon. Now, as I said, the second co-ruler here is Mars. And Mars is important because Mars was also the ruler of the Aries solar eclipse on April 8th that initiated something. And that Mars was conjunct Saturn. And now this Mars is approaching a conjunction to Neptune. But Mars in Pisces has been key and influential for a few of these lunar events now. And he's learning to integrate more of your spiritual growth, to learn from what you've been through, to be ready to do it differently, to allow a chapter to close out and to end. And so that could be something that you're feeling now as well. It's almost like if you're feeling any melancholy, sorrow, grief, sadness that you've been trying to avoid, that could be something you could be fighting in yourself. But I feel like what this Mars, what this Mars in Pisces is understanding is I'm never going to pass this way again. So what do I want to take with me forward? What am I going to use that helps define my next steps and my next journey? And so this Mars actually has a lot happening within him. And as he approaches this Neptune at 28 degrees of Pisces, so almost near the very, very end of the full zodiac wheel, there is a significant surrender here that could even be humbling, that could be something that brings up self-forgiveness or forgiveness, uh, self-compassion, that also connects you to the spiritual purpose. And purpose is a Mars word. And as Mars is in Pisces, nearing exact conjunction with Neptune, you might have insights on what you've been learning and clearing, perhaps the karma you've been closing or the karma that you're involved in. Perhaps it's related to also all the ways you have shifted, grown, and changed that this Neptune wants you to release and unravel something and to basically remove it because you're not going to need it in the next growth cycle. So this energy still, it has remnants of what we're closing and ending. And that's going to continue, by the way, uh, into early 2026. So we're going to keep talking about, you know, Saturn and Neptune together here in Pisces. But it's more significant when a personal planet is working with them because a personal planet brings it into your current reality, into this present timeline. And that could be something that maybe has been confusing. You know, maybe you feel like you've just been in an overwhelm or state of confusion about so many things that are happening because of this strong focus on Pisces energies. And yet one of the gifts of Pisces is to go higher, rise above this current reality and your self-identity, rise above what you thought you knew and go into not only the spiritual purpose, but more of the soul meaning of this, this game of energy. And that could be one way to surmise the earthly experience. It's the game of energies, all these energies that we can create and feel, experience, interact with. How do you still maintain your sense of purpose and what you're learning with compassion and love for yourself? And that could be something too 
uh, that you're feeling. This, this does have the energy of endings, like strong endings, especially with the Scorpio moon squaring Pluto, um, death, dying, closure, things needing to transform. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, literal death, but figurative, metaphorical death. Something is meant to change into a new consciousness. And a part of you could be fighting that with the square from Pluto and the opposition from the sun. Now, also in the chart, we still have Team Aries here. North Node, Mercury, still retrograde. Uh, Mercury will station direct two days after the full moon. Chiron at 20 degrees, Venus at 23 degrees of Aries. And so these are the parts of yourself where you're gathering courage around whatever has shifted or changed for you, especially since that Aries solar eclipse that was very healing in the highest expressions, uh, perhaps even triggering or opening up the wound in the lower expressions, but showing you more of how you are recreating yourself, what is true for you, your next level of potentials, self-improvement, and perhaps all of this has been on your mind with that Mercury retrograde in Aries. But there's some things that you are seeing about yourself, the truth of who you are, what you want, what matters to you, and understanding that there's something here that you're meant to fully own in a new way, in a new way for yourself. Also, going back to this Mars, if you'll recall, Mars was in a sextile to Uranus and Jupiter during their conjunction, and that's still the case. And so he's clearing out space and energy for whatever is coming up here in the Taurus areas of your chart. But this, this chart, it has a quiet to it. It has a, yeah, it has a discomfort. It has something deeper, deeper to understand. And so there's something about this particular full moon that is bringing you to new levels of personal enlightenment. enlightenment. But first, you have to address something, see it for what it is. Interesting. And what I'm feeling is this is about dropping into your heart. Like the depths of the heart and how the heart space can hold so much. And there could be something here in the heart space that is the true enlightenment. But it's not the journey on a rainbow, on your unicorn, to the pot of gold. It's the journey through the depths, discomfort, some of the lower expressions even of Scorpio that you're meant to transform and look at. And as, again, as the moon moves forward, that will become easier to do as the moon trines these planets here in Pisces. Lots of emotional energy with this one. So be sure and responsibly run the emotions through your body, through energy work, perhaps through uh, tapping, emotional freedom technique, tapping, uh, acupuncture, acupressure, uh, breath work, yoga work, anything that allows you to be in that place of control of the emotional body but honoring the process, honoring that emotions are made to move through us and that that will ultimately set you free and feel like, yeah, I've, I've transformed this. I moved through this and I'm on the other side of it. 
So I am hoping that that is what you experience during this intense Scorpio full moon, that whatever comes up for you, you see it as a beautiful gift of empowerment on your journey. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back here soon with another video for you and have a beautiful Scorpio full moon.